Hi everyone. Today we're going to look at chapter 5, water and solution. This is from form 2, chapter 5, unit 5, water and solution. We will look at 5.1 physical characteristics of water today. Okay. As we know that water is the most essential compound and it is needed by all of us in our daily life. And if we see the whole world, if you see the globe here, almost 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. As we know, three quarter of the Earth's surface is covered by water. All right. Okay, let's start with the physical properties of pure water. What do we mean by pure water? Pure water should be H2O, a complete H2O water without any presence of impurities. For example, if you take a tap water, I can't disclose or I can't explain or I can't tell that tap water is a pure water because it's not pure water. Pure water normally we obtain by distillation. It's a pure component of H2O. The properties of pure water will be number one. Density is one gram per cm cube. One gram per cm cube at four degrees Celsius. Then the boiling point of pure water is always 100 degrees Celsius. The freezing point of pure water is always zero degrees Celsius. At the boiling point, the liquid will change to gas and at the freezing point, the liquid will change to solid. We also know that pure water is odorless, no smell at all and tasteless. There's no taste. Water actually do not have taste. Then if you look at another physical property of water is that if you look at it here, every water, when we pour water in a container, or when we look at stagnant calm water on the surface here there is a force so water molecules are very special this is a diagram of one water molecule another water molecule and this is the surface of other molecules all right so if you look at it here water molecules are a bit special if you see here the water molecule and another water molecule same type of water or same type of molecules the water molecule and another water molecule the forces of attraction between them is called cohesion. Cohesion, And the forces of attraction between the water molecule and other type of molecules are called addition. So adhesive force and cohesive force, right? So cohesive force between the water molecules. Water molecule and water molecule, the same type of molecule form cohesive force. Adhesive force is between the water molecule and other molecules, all right? This is a special physical property of a water molecule, all right? We have surface tension, water will have surface tension on the surface and there's a cohesive and adhesive force. Okay, let's look at it again. So what is the importance of the cohesive force? Cohesive force is the forces of attraction between water molecule and water molecule. The forces are forming a very strong surface layer, which we say high tension or high surface tension water in a very stagnant calm level the surface of water will have a very high force it's called a high surface tension force the force is too strong where it can even support a very tiny minute insects to or able to walk on the surface you, you can even put a small tiny pin or metal plates very tiny and lightweight if you put it on the surface they might be floating right what is the importance of the cohesive and adhesive forces in other formation if you look at it here the capillary effect is the movement of water from the roots of plants from the roots of plants from the roots of plants where they are able to move through the stem and goes to the shoots and the leaves so all these are possible because of the forces of attraction if you see here between the water molecules and the other structure of the cells this is called adhesive forces so there is a cohesion and addition or cohesive and adhesive forces which will allow the water molecules to move up from the roots straight go to the shoots right so this physical property of water with a high surface tension and also the cohesive and adhesive forces enable the water molecules to move up against gravity in plants right so if you look at it here we have seen again the physical properties of pure water, density, freezing point, boiling point, water is odorless, tasteless. Then we look at the surface tension, high surface tension force, and we try to understand what is a cohesive and adhesive force. Then we look at the importance of the cohesive and adhesive forces. Next, the three state of water, as we all know, it will be the solid form state, 
the liquid stain and the vapor. Okay, next. As we all know that effects of absorption of heat and release of heat, when water molecules absorb the heat, they go up the heating curve. As they absorb the heat, they go up the heating curve. And when they go up the heating curve, you will know that, all of us know that, it's a melting process. The ice will melt to become liquid. The liquid will form a gas water vapor, right? So the solid to liquid is melting and the liquid to gas is evaporation or boiling. And the gas to the solid is sublimation, all right? No issue. And then the gas can form back the liquid if heat is released is condensation and the liquid can become solid. It is called freezing. So this state of matter, all of us must know, you must understand heat is absorbed, melting, boiling or evaporation or even sublimation, sublimation. But when the heat is released, gas changed to liquid, liquid changed back to solid. All right, so it's condensation and freezing. Okay, next one. If you look at it, every water molecule is actually made of one oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. One oxygen and two hydrogen atoms. So it's actually a composition where it's called a compound. What is a compound? Two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. So how do we break down water molecules? We have to use a chemical process called electrolysis. Electrolysis needs electrical energy. Current supply, we have two terminals, the cathodes and the anodes, and we can split water to become hydrogen and oxygen. Always, we can see it's very easy. The ratio is two to one, hydrogen two, oxygen one, hydrogen two, oxygen one. We just need the supply of electric current, we can split the water to hydrogen and oxygen. If you see here, hydrogen is always formed at the negative terminal. This is the negative terminal, the cathode. We call it the cathode. And the longer terminal is the positive terminal, the symbol. So anode, anode always form the oxygen. So electrolysis will form oxygen and hydrogen. This is a proof to show the water is made of compound. It's split to the hydrogen and oxygen. And if you look at it here, how do we test the gases? To test the oxygen, you just need a glowing wooden splinter. The glowing wooden splinter will be lighted. Uh, to test the hydrogen, you just need a lighted wooden splinter. If there is hydrogen gas, the lighter wooden splinter will form a pop sound when it is burnt in front of the hydrogen gas. So oxygen, you need to have a glowing wooden splinter. It will form the, uh, it will rekindle or the glowing wooden splinter will be lighted. For hydrogen, the lighted wooden splinter will form a pop sound explosion. And during electrolysis, we know that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. We split the water to hydrogen oxygen by electrolysis right the ratio we know hydrogen 2 oxygen 1 and the basic idea here the effects of impurities the next idea here the physical properties the freezing point of ice is 0 degrees celsius but the moment you put impurities it can be salt it can be sugar any presence of impurities will decrease i repeat again the presence of impurities will decrease the melting point or freezing point of water at zero degree Celsius, it's supposed to change from solid ice to water, or that's a freezing point liquid to ice. But if you add, let's say, salt or sugar, which are called impurities, it will decrease the point. See, the zero can turn to become minus two. And then the same thing goes the other way, opposite way. If you look at it here, the effects of impurities on the boiling point of water. If you add impurities to water, the boiling point will increase. So the presence of salt or sugar or any impurities to water will increase the boiling point. And the last thing we have to know is about evaporation. Evaporation is a process where it occurs only on the surface of water. Why evaporation occur? Okay, it only takes place on the surface of water and it can occur at any temperature. Why it occur? Because all the particles on the surface will have a certain level of average kinetic energy and as they experience continuous collision with the air particles, they will gain extra energy. See these molecules on the surface layer here, they will gain extra energy compared to the molecule of water at the bottom layer. Since they have the extra energy, they can escape to the air and they form vapor, the gas vapor. So this process only occur on the surface, so it is called evaporation. In 
If you see evaporation occur every day, the plants will undergo evaporation from the transpiration, the humidity, all this happen daily, all right? What are the factors that affect the rate of evaporation? Very simple, humidity, where if there's a lot of water particles in the air, the humidity is higher. So very simple, the rate of evaporation is faster when the humidity is lower. So if the air consists less humidity, the evaporation rate from the surface of water is higher. First factor is the humidity. The lower the humidity of air, the higher the rate of evaporation. So dry air contains less vapor, water vapor. So evaporation occurs at a faster rate. Surrounding temperature or even the liquid temperature, the higher the surrounding temperature, the higher the rate of evaporation. Or if the liquid is hot, the liquid is hot, it also can undergo a higher evaporation. So liquid can evaporate faster because the average kinetic energy of the molecules increases higher. And surface area, very simple. The larger the surface area of the liquid, the more the number of particles can escape at a smaller time. The more the number of particles can escape, so the rate of evaporation increases. The larger the surface area, the higher the rate of evaporation. And air movement. If the speed of wind on the surface is higher, the particles on the surface will undergo evaporation at a higher rate, right? So if I look at it here, evaporation is a process where the water particles on the surface change to gas, liquid change to gas at any temperature on the surface. And the factors are humidity, the lower the humidity, the higher the rate of evaporation. Then we have surrounding temperature, the higher the surrounding temperature, the higher the rate of evaporation. The surface area, the larger the surface area, the higher the evaporation, air movement, the faster, the higher the speed of air on the surface of water, the higher the rate of evaporation. And where do we use evaporation? We use evaporation in daily life like drying the clothes and then like mopping and drying the wet floor, drying the hair. And when we sweat also we evaporate, that also can cool down the body, all right? And the applications here, we use evaporation to form dry seafood, milk powder from solution of milk, salt in the seaside, natural salt in agriculture, the dried grains, fruits, all these are obtained through evaporation. So this is the process of evaporation needed in our daily life. So we are done with chapter 5, 5.1, the physical properties of water. All right, physical properties of water. So we went through the whole chapter. Five, uh, the subtopic of 5.1 from chapter 5 today, physical characteristics of water. Thank you again, students. Bye.